be part of the official program but also uh, sending us well, uh, the handy Mr. Mulavinaka and a very good morning to you all I'm indeed very much delighted and honored to be here once again with you uh, this morning at this very very uh, momentous and auspicious occasion that marks the official opening of our newly constructed Waimaro Health Centre here in Dra. I remember coming here uh, with the uh, former High Commissioner Margaret Toomey when we did the groundbreaking. And that excitement uh, is showing its fruit today. First and foremost, please allow me to thank the community of Waimaro for the warm welcome accorded to me and the High Commissioner uh, this morning. Thank you very much. I'd also like to put on record my appreciation the leaders of Waimaro for their commitment and support that has been successful, uh, that actually has seen us complete this new development uh, project. I'm also pleased to say that the new health centre will radically improve the quality of service and infrastructure for patients and staff both in the immediate future and the years to come. So today indeed is a new day. Today indeed is a very proud day for the people of Waimaro in the province of Ra and today indeed is a proud day for the Ministry of Health. As this new facility will also be equipped with new and enhanced equipment with modern design infrastructure which has been made possible through the timely assistance of the Australian Government. On behalf of the Fijian Government and the Ministry of Health, I would like to say a big binakabakelebu and a big thank you and express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to your Government, Your Excellency, for this tremendous support, not only through the construction of uh, the, the, the fully-fledged Waimaro Health Centre, but Australia, as you've said, has, been, has, has considered Fiji to be one of its most trusted friends. Thank you very much. And of course, Australia has been our trusted and helpful partners in terms of re rehabilitation programs and assistance provided after the severe tropical cyclone Winston. I'm sure as long as we live, we'll always talk about T.C. Winston and the damage it did not only to the infrastructure but to our lives and the economy as well. Indeed, the assistance of this magnitude is a reflection of Australia's uh, commitment to help Fiji at one of its most challenging times, and for that we are humbly grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Waimaro Health Centre will directly serve a population of 29,000 people in Ra. Just as a way of background, the Waimaro Nursing Station, along with other health facilities, was destroyed during T.C. Winston in February 2016. Immediately after the cyclone, Australia funded the rebuilding works for the three temporary nursing stations through Fiji's health sector support program, which were built by Habitat for Humanity Fiji. These nursing stations, one was at Waimaro in Ra, then there was another one in Nassau <coughs> on Poro Island and Kese in Yasawa. Apart from this, Australia has also supported the Ministry of Health to conduct health assessments and distribute water and sanitation items. The new Waimaro Health Centre is co finance initiative between Australia and the Fijian government and is part of Australia's pledge of, uh, Your Excellency, 40 million, 40 million Fijian dollars to help Fiji recover from the devastation of T.C. Winston. This centre that you will see includes an upgraded health facility. Of course, we'll have doctors living quarters and a duplex for two nurses. The design of the building comp applies with the requirements of a level C health centre as advised by the Ministry of Health, uh, services categorization of health facilities. The facility upgrade includes the provision of necessary equipment and of course a vehicle for primary health care outreach. Honourable Assistant Minister, you'd be very happy with that. And I'm sure the team is also very happy with this because many a times we are faced with challenges when it comes to transportation, when it comes to reaching out to the far lying inter uh, interior uh, areas around the country. So Your Excellency, your generous donation of a um, primary health care outreach vehicle for the team is very much appreciated. Thank you very much. 
The total value of the support is uh, around 1.2 million Fijian dollars, and the Ministry of Health has constructed two nurses' quarters. I'm sure you're aware that currently, as mentioned, the Assistant Minister has been going around the country to the maritime areas, reaching out to health facilities, which have been neglected for quite a long time, and we are trying to see how best we can upgrade nurses' quarters and other facilities. Of course, we want our nurses to be very comfortable in their, in their quarters. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say this, that for a long, long time that had been neglected. Yeah? And due to that negligence, a lot of our facilities are not in, in very proper condition. So we have embarked, and Minister, I think for the last year and a half, he has been traveling to the far-reaching areas trying to see how best these facilities could be upgraded. And this is going to be an ongoing project, and uh, hopefully it will be completed in the near future. So for this project, ladies and gentlemen, that initial scoping and preparatory work was undertaken by a previous health program managing contractor. And upon, upon the completion of the contract with DFAT on June 30th, 2017, the work was transferred to the DFAT funded access to quality to education program. And that has been undertaking school reconstruction in Ryan Koro. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you will be able to see the new schools that are being co constructed in Koro. Uh, they, they are just, just beautiful and they have been really built back in a very, very um, sort of it, keeping in view the intensity of the cyclones that we are going to experience in the near future. Beautiful facilities uh, for, the, for the children of these islands and again with the kind generosity of our Australian uh, counterparts. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this new Waimaro Health Facility will, be, will have a medical officer, three other staff, including a zone nurse, a nurse, and a support staff. And I'm sure they will bring, uh, they will uplift the service delivery for, for you here. The facility will also provide primary health care services and public health care for the community, and will have the capacity to manage emergency deliveries as necessary. I'm also pleased to announce that Australia's new support to Fiji's health sector is a five-year Australian 25 million investment that focuses on, one, strengthening health services and primary health care, strengthening public health and hospital services, strengthening planning and financial management, supporting workforce development, and enhancing health information for better decision making. This health program is administered by the Fiji Health Support Facility and is currently in its first year of implementation and through which there will be more opportunities and developments for the health sector in Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, projects such as this require collaboration, commitment, and of course dedication of all stakeholders represented here today. And a project of this nature, of course, will generate well-being and development of our communities. Therefore, once again, on behalf of the Fijian government, can I ask all of us to express our sincere gratitude. for the generous support in bringing to fruition a joint commitment that occurred two years ago in the building of the nursing station. So we convey our gratitude to the team at the Australian government for the strength and partnership that has given us the opportunity to see the completion of this project and enhance further collaboration with the government. With the unveiling of this new health facility today, ladies and gentlemen, I see this as a platform to strengthen Australia-Fiji's partnership further and it will serve as a great aspiration for other potential stakeholders to join hands with the Ministry of Health to come on board and help us make the needed changes to enhance the health services in Fiji for the betterment of our people. Through this collaboration, it is also an opportunity uh, for the corporate and private institutions to take pride in their local health center and appreciate the services that they will be able to contrib contribute by working together with the government. The Ministry is delivering services, ladies and gentlemen, but achieving the consolidated goal of creating a healthy nation is a shared vision and responsibility. We cannot walk alone. We need to walk with businesses. We need to walk with communities. We need to walk with faith-based organizations. We need to walk with charitable organizations. We need to walk with the leaders within our communities. We need to walk with international development partners to really build and sustain healthcare services that every Fijian truly deserves. Ladies and gentlemen, there was, a, there was this mention of a few diseases uh, uh, by, the, by, the, by the High Commissioner, and one of them was meningococcal disease. 
which I'll be briefly touching on. But I also like us to go back to dengue. We can't forget dengue because we have another outbreak. Dengue, the season is ripe for dengue fever. And like I said, we cannot walk alone to eliminate dengue. Dengue cases rose to a very high number in the recent months. And we are very serious about getting people to take action. Like I said, it's a shared responsibility. You and I can walk together to ensure that we destroy all dengue breeding places within our communities. So to the leaders present here, to the members of the Vanua present here, <coughs> please let us walk together. If you need our teams to go down to the villages, they're, they're already going down. But you need to talk to your people to see how best we can eliminate dengue breeding places. Simple. What needs to be done is emptying all containers, all tires, cleaning up the roof gutters, cutting your grass to ensure that we do not allow those mosquitoes to breed and come and bite us. Research shows there are more than 26 strains of mosquitoes in Fiji, types of mosquitoes in Fiji, and only two of them are capable of spreading dengue. So we don't know which one is going to bite us. So we need to get rid of all dengue breeding places. So I urge the Vanua, I urge the elders, please walk with your children so that we can save them. Coming back to uh, meningococcal disease, a lot of them know it as meningitis. It's a very life-threatening <laughs> disease. Again, please do not take this very lightly. It mostly affects a lot of children. So we are asking you to keep listening to radios, keep listening to advice that the health ministry is giving. Signs and symptoms of cough, severe, uh, severe fever, rash, it comes out vomiting. Anything that you see abnormal in your children or your family members, please take them to the nearest health center, okay? There's a kiwa if it is detected early. We do not want the public to panic. We are working with our partners, WHO, we're working with the UNICEF, and I'm sure we're working with DFED as well, to see how best we can bring it under control. Obviously, we are treating that as very urgent, but at the same time, we are asking, we are pleading with the members of the public, should you have any abnormal signs and symptoms, like I said, high fever, you know? Or, or vomiting, nausea, there's so many things. Please take your child, take your family members to the nearest health center and our team are ready to, uh, to address that. Again, as if detected early, if you report early, we will be able to cure that. But do understand, it is a life-threatening disease. It is worse than dengue. In simple terms, meningococcal disease is worse than dengue. So we, we want everybody to be very cautious about this health advice that we're giving. Unfortunately, one of the things we tell people is do not share bowls, drinking bottles. Unfortunately, we were sharing the grog bar here today. So please, you want to drink grog, get your special bowl. It is spread through saliva exchange. Uh, see, see, because it's sort of new and the way we are coming out, people sort of find it very funny, you know? But that's the truth. Please, when you... You can have your grog as much as you want, but do not share the bilo, okay? Um, another thing, if you're coughing, if you have a bad cough, cover your mouth. Simple things like that will help spread it to the other person. Um, stay away from children if you are sick. Now, another issue that people find very uh, um, sort of funny is when they say, do not kiss, deep kissing, saliva exchange, please. If you are sick, don't engage in that because you're going to make yourself sick you're going to make other people sick. These are certain things that we really have to talk about openly, ladies and gentlemen, because it's very dangerous. And we are not mincing our words here by saying, don't do this, don't do that. But at the end of the day, it, it's you. Yeah? We can only advise. So I urge the people present here, please take this message back to your families. The ladies are out there. Simple things like hand washing. Simple things like washing your hand when dealing with food. Wash your hand when you attend to your children. Wash your hence after you visit the loo. Hand washing, okay, a lot of germs and bacteria is also spread through hand washing. So somebody spits out, he's infected, and you go and your hand goes there, or your child is, goes there. That child puts the hand in the mouth. This is how you spread it. So we are going to a lot of communities telling them about the, 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 the dangers that this, uh, uh, this disease can bring about, and again, like we said, it is life-threatening, okay? So the Minister of Team will be releasing information, will be coming down to your communities, advising you. But again, if I may say that and at the end of the day, your health is your responsibility. So keep your surroundings clean, okay? Look after your families. 
Now you have a beautiful, uh, great sea health centre. Utilise it. It's for you. And all thanks to the Australian government. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I leave you with uh, this uh, very simple message. Easter is coming up. Um, you have a four days break coming up. Stay home with your families. Look after your families. Think, reflect on your life. What do you want to do tomorrow? How, how you want to live? You want to live a healthy life? You want to, you want to live a long life but not healthy? You're also aware that oh, NCDs, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke is just too much in Fiji. And how is that caused? Lack of physical activity, too much sugar, too much salt, too much oil, too much spices, no exercise. So we also want that. We want you to live a very healthy life. We don't want you to live a long life but keep running to the hospitals. See, the success of any health facility is when not many people come there. When the health facility is full, that means we have a very sick population. We want you to be healthy. We want you to come to the health center when you are really sick. Look after your health. Grow your own fruits and vegetables. Eat healthy. Exercise. Be physically active. Okay? Too much taki for the whole night would not be very good. Get up, walk, and be active. Okay? So with these words, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all a very, very, very happy Easter weekend. And uh, stay healthy. Look after your families and God bless you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good